I'm Erin Foberg, co-author of Human Geography, People, Place, and Culture with Alec Murphy, and I'm here to give you some mini lectures that'll hopefully help you get through the next few weeks of online classes. First, I want to tell you the approach that we took in the 12th edition that'll hopefully give you a big overview of how to handle the new course exam description for uh, AP Human Geography. So the first thing I did is I took the entire course exam description, the 2019 version, I put it into a text file, um, and then I took that text file uh, and I analyzed it using Envivo software, which is a content analysis software, to look for the most frequently used words and phrases and terms in the course exam description. I came up with this word cloud, which is the 100 most frequently used words in the course exam description for AP Human Geography, the 2019 version, and you'll see some words pop out. Some of the words that pop out, of course, are going to be geographic, um, pattern, different, explain, development, economic. Some of the words are really helpful. Some of the words are helpful to tell us how to write our FRQs and the kinds of words like explain that we, we might want to use that students might find. Um, other words are helpful because they tell us what concepts we should really focus on. I think the most important message I want to give you and your students is that, there is that there is no way you can actually memorize everything that is in this course exam description. It's just not possible. There's way too much content. I count over 300 concepts in this course exam description. Um, so the, the course is simply too much to memorize. And so what I'd like you to do since we're all supposed to be slowing down, is to just slow down in this course and focus on learning how to think geographically. To do that, let's prioritize certain concepts that show up over and over again in the course exam description. So I took that, through that in, in vivo software analysis, that content analysis, I came up with the 100 most frequently word, used words, and then I turned that into the most frequent occurring concepts. So this is the most frequently occurring words um, using words that are derivatives of the major words. Uh, you can also see it in what's called a word tree um, and it shows you the same words. So we've seen the same 100 words three ways. First in word cloud, then in an Excel spreadsheet, and now in a word tree. Um, and I filtered through all of these and come up with the most frequently occurring concepts that I think we need to focus on, and I'm going to make little videos on those major concepts that are going to show up over and over again. And if students can use those concepts well, they'll start thinking geographically, they'll start to be able to analyze maps, analyze patterns, and bring in those concepts to try and bring all their thoughts together and organize their ideas. They'll also be the concepts that most likely will show up in multiple choice questions because they show up so frequently in the course exam description. So some of the concepts include cultural landscape, population, which means population pyramid is something that we should be focusing on, development, scale, regions, um, the list goes on. I've got about 20 of them and I'm going to give you uh, short videos on all of them, maybe not one at a time, maybe a couple per video. Two concepts I'm going to tie together today are cultural landscape and migration. Cultural landscape is a visible human imprint on the landscape. What's awesome about cultural landscape is it's a fundamental concept in geography. It ties to everything in human geography because human geography is about how people make places and cultural landscape is the result of it. It's what imprint humans make on a place when they create that place and there can be layer after layer after layer of human imprint in one place. And once you start reading cultural landscapes, you can't stop. And the best way to get students to start reading cultural landscapes is to give them an example and then to ask them to read cultural landscapes in their own town, in their own area, in their own neighborhood. So the example I'm gonna give you is from the first chapter of Human Geography. These are two photos Alec Murphy took. One on the left is in Mumbai, India, and on the right is in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania. Um, what it's showing is that the houses, the way the apartment buildings are drawn or uh, designed in these two places are similar. They both are four stories with balconies. And the story Alex telling in these pictures and the story that we tell in the caption is that the Indians who migrated to Tanzania brought this housing style, this apartment style with them. So you can ask students to try and find a map then in the book and hopefully they think of looking at chapter three, which is on migration, to think about how India and Tanzania are connected. 
Well, first you can uh, get them to start thinking about where Tanzania is. Um, and maybe they could even just start with India and what arrows go out of India. And that would help them if they haven't learned their countries of the world yet. Uh, if they have learned their countries of the world, they can find themselves into East Africa and they can find themselves in Tanzania. And they can look at number five, the green arrow on here, and see it says the migration of South Asians to other British colonies as indentured servants and to serve administrative roles. So that migration flow brought uh, people from India to East Africa, including Tanzania, bringing that housing style um, that you can see as a visible imprint on the landscape there today. Thanks everyone.